let's talk about a very interesting situation in beta decay. So when the parent nucleus undergone beta decay, so it produces a daughter and a beta, right, we have seen earlier when we analyzed alpha decay that we expect the kinetic energy of the beta particles to always be the same if we observe the same beta decay again and again. However, what was observed was something quite different. So we saw that a range of kinetic energies were detected in the released beta particles in the same decay. So what this presented to scientists was that it appeared to be some kind of contradiction to both the conservation of linear momentum and the conservation of energy, which is very puzzling because these are two very, very powerful laws in physics. Now, so of course, rather than say that these two concepts are wrong, it was then suggested that we weren't seeing the full picture. And so it was then proposed that when the uh, parent nucleus underwent beta decay, there was not only a daughter and a beta particle, but there could have been some other unknown particle over there that was accounting for this balance or un imbalance, should I say, in energy and momentum. And so upon closer inspection, it was then real, it was then discovered actually that this particle was a very small, chargeless particle, something like a neutron, but something more on the order of the size of an electron, which we call a neutrino. And so that was how this very, very subtle particle was discovered. So now, of course, the full beta decay will look something like this. So we've got the parent, daughter, plus beta particle plus neutrino. Well, actually, if this beta particle was an electron, then this should be an anti-neutrino. But for the purposes of this exam, it is not so important that we call it an anti-neutrino. Uh, a neutrino should suffice.